In this problem, we have two beams and we are looking for three parameters. Here I want to introduce a concept that we use for similar problems. And I want everybody to understand this. If you have any issues with part of that, let's get back to review that and make sure everybody understands the concept. The problem asks, determine the beam deflections at point H. Assume that EI is 12 times 10 to the 7th kips inch squared and that's constant along the length of the beam. First, determine how much is the deflection of the cantilever beam for beam number one at point B. Second, we add something to that beam, extend that up to point H, and the problem says how much is the deflection of beam number two at point B, then how much is the deflection of beam number two at point H, okay? Let's do that for the very first beam, the cantilever beam, which is subjected to a moment at the right end. To determine that, we need to find appropriate equation from the table. Let me get back to the table and see which one works for this uh, equation. Here, this table is about uh, cantilever beam, and this one is for uh, simply supported beams. Which one should I go for? Definitely this one, because it's a cantilever beam. So, which figure should we use for determining the deflection? 9. Okay, so we have to work with that. So, for that one, the problem says how much is the deflection of the beam at the very right end? So, look at this. Let me zoom into that area. The deflection at the beam at the very right end is maximum deflection. So, I simply go and pick up this equation ml squared divided by 2ei. So slope for that beam is ml over ei, and deflection is ml squared over 2ei. And I can plug the values. How much is the moment? Moment is 40 kips feet. All units should be compatible with each other. The uh, moment of inertia and e are given in kips inch, so I need to convert that moment into kips inch. So that would be 40 times 12 to convert that into kips inch. And the length of the beam is 9 feet. So distance of this beam from A to B is 9 feet. And again, I need to multiply that by 12 to convert that into inch and divide that by EI. This is the value of theta at that point. Now the second part looks for the value of deflection at that point, which is equal to delta B and delta B is ml squared over 2EI. This is the value that we read from that table, and I simply plug the values. M is 40 times 12, EI is what we have there, and the length is 9 times 12, and that gives me a value of negative 0 0.02332 inch. So these two are actually showing the answer of the first part, part A. The top one is slope, and the bottom one is the deflection. This is this beam. Now, let's talk about part B. Part B says, how much is the deflection and slope in this beam? Look at this. What is the difference between the top beam and the bottom beam? The bottom beam actually is a bit longer, but there is not any external load. Here I assume that the weight of the beam is negligible, so I ignore that weight. If you add anything to that part, does it change the deflection of the beam before that point? No, it doesn't change the deflection before that. So how much is the value of deflection and slope of the beam number two at that point? Same. Okay. This is the way that we can calculate the value of deflection for this beam. Because if you get to that table, let me show you that table again, there is not any beam which has a moment acting at the middle. So how we can determine the flexion of a beam which has a moment at the middle of that? We use this concept that we talked about. Okay? Now, listen carefully. We have answered the second part, but we haven't answered the third part. To determine the flexion at point H, how can I determine the flexion of this beam at the right end? There is not any value in the table that I can use. Because in the table, all the moments are acting on the very right part of that. Here we use trigonometric equations. 
How we can use that? Listen carefully to this part. I'm, I zoom into that area to make it more visible. The point is, the extension part of this from B to H remains straight line because there is not any internal bending moment. So it doesn't bend. It remains a straight line, okay? So it deforms like this. And if I know how much is the theta or slope of this beam at that point, I can form a triangle like that. And in that triangle, tangent of theta 2 is delta prime divided by distance from B to H. Okay? However, we can simplify that more. Instead of saying tangent of theta, I can say theta is equal to that because it's the deformation or angle is very small. So here I can write it like that. Delta prime is theta times L2. Or if you want, you can replace that delta prime is equal to tangent of theta times L2. That will give you the same number as long as this theta is small. Delta H will be delta prime plus delta 2. And delta prime is theta times L2. I can say delta H is delta B plus L2 times sine of theta at that point, or uh, tangent of theta at that point, or theta at that point. As I said, they are all equal to each other. Okay? So let's plug the values. Negative 0 0.02332 is the value of deflection at B. Length of the beam from B to H is 6 feet, which is equal to 12 inch. I'm talking about this distance. Look at this. From B to H is 6 feet. And the theta is 0 0.000432 radian. And I will get this number, 0 0.0544 inch. That is the downward deflection of beam at that point. Okay, please do a favor for me. Instead of calculating this equation with sine, replace sine with tangent and see what you get. So one person, please do that for me. Another person, remove the sine and just multiply that by that theta and see what you get. So two calculations, please. Raise your hand if you get a number. What's that? Which, which scenario is that? Which case? Theta. theta, okay. That's the same as the one that we have here. So this is the case that you ignored the sign. You, used, you just multiplied that by theta, correct? Okay, any number for tangent? Same. So you will get the same number if you work with tangent, sine, or you simply ignore that and multiply that by theta. Remember, that's only valid if the theta is very small. Okay, now let me solve another problem, which uses the same concept, 